did you know that quizzes is a really fun way to use with students to help them learn information, review information, or even to assess them. Let's take a quick look at how quizzes works. But before I begin, I'd like to tell you the top 10 reasons I love quizzes. Number one is that you can have it set to automatically read questions and answers to students. This is a great way to allow students to still be able to participate even if they aren't great readers. You can create your own fun memes. I made memes from our staff. So they get to see our staff giving them kind of the thumbs up or the thumbs down. Your scores are automatically saved in Google Classroom. So if you send your quizzes to Google Classroom, it will automatically put your scores right into Classroom. There's a ton of pre-made quizzes questions. You can share with your coworkers. It's easy. It's fun. It's quick. It can be done individually or as a class. And the quizzes can be printed, so it looks just like a normal test if you want to use it that way. So, I love quizzes. Let's take a look at how you can use it in your classroom. Okay, once you get into quizzes, it's actually pretty self-explanatory, but I just want to go through a few things that I think are really neat. First of all, let's start by creating a new quiz. When I create my new quiz, I'm just going to call it a uh, sample, maybe Civil War. And now I can go ahead and create new questions. I can start from scratch. What year did the war begin? I can put as many options as I want. Well, I can put um, anywhere from two to four options. And then I just have to make sure I, I click the answer that's correct. So I, correct, I hit the correct answer. And I save it. And there's my first question. Now I can continue to write my own questions or what's really cool is that I can go, I can search from existing questions, which brings me to all other questions that other people have created. So I can go into the question banks just using my same title or same topic. So I'm going to do a Civil War search. Oops. So now I see all the questions that are, the, the quizzes that are made. There's a ton of them. And I can just go ahead and tap on any one of them. And then if I see some questions that I like, what I can do is I can tap on the question and then I just click add and it automatically adds it to my test. So I don't have to write all my own questions, which is really slick because a lot of people have already done a lot of the, a lot of the hard work for me. When I'm done, I've got all the questions I need. I can finish my quiz. I just have to put a few things to categorize it. And that's how easy it is to write your own test. Now, the next thing, once you, once you get your test written, is you're going to keep all your tests here. So you can see tests you've written before. You can just go ahead and save somebody's test exactly as it is. So you can duplicate it, and then you can modify it. The next thing down in the menu is reports. And I really like the reports option. Because if I go into a report of a test I'm giving, I can see exactly how kids are doing. So in this sample one that I did of Manifest Destiny, I can see that the students in this test only have 61% accuracy with six questions and three players. So my three players, Adam Thielen and Kirk Cousins, they did pretty well. Aaron Rodgers, of course, didn't do real well. If I tap on the name of that person, I can see exactly how they did. So I can see how they answered each question. I can see that Adam made one mistake on, on how, where the Louisiana Purchase was. I can go into Kirk Cousins and see how he did. And I can go, go ahead. So you can see each student how they did. This is a great option to be able to see what questions students are getting wrong and be able to see if there's some area you need to reteach in. Because I can go to questions. I can see how many people answer each question. I can do the overview. And if I have standards in there. So again, it's a great report to be able to look at how kids do. 
Now once I have my quiz ready, I'm going to go into my quiz, and we'll just go into the sample Civil War quiz. When I'm ready to give it, I have a couple different options for giving the quiz. I can do a live game, and this is where I might do it in, with my class, all sitting right in front of me. Now the one difference between quizzes and Kahoot is even in a live game and quizzes, the students are playing at their own pace. They don't have to look up at your board to see what your questions are. They're still going to use just their personal device to see the questions individually and actually in a randomized order. They all get the same questions and we'll do it during class, but they don't have to be on the same question waiting for everyone else to answer. If it's a homework game, I can let them go ahead and do it at home, do it anywhere they want. Again, just like, well, just like the other one, I have the options of how I want the questions to be. I can shuffle them. I can shuffle the answers or the questions. I can show the questions, the answers as soon as they're done if I'd like. I can show memes. I can play music. When I was showing you earlier, when I was telling you earlier that you can choose your own memes, if you look here, you can see that I have a set of RJEMS staff memes that I would select to be able to pop up during, during our quiz. So this is our staff and I made up memes to be for either right or wrong questions. Once I decide how I want the test to work, I hit the proceed and then I have a couple ways to share it with students. I can either just give them the game code or I can assign it directly to classroom. If I send it directly to classroom, the really nice thing is, is that it will, as soon as they're done taking the test, it will automatically enter their scores into my classroom assignment. So I don't have to come back here if I don't want to. I can see the scores directly put into classroom. So that's kind of a cool option. So that's kind of the basics of it. It's pretty simple. You can explore a little bit more, but like I said, there's great reports. There's great options for how you give the quiz. And um, it's just easy to use and easy to make up quizzes. One additional feature that I think is really nice is the ability to just print um, a test. So if you look on the right column on the right side, if I tap the print button, it actually takes my test questions and gives me a regular printed version with an answer key. So I could print this out and hand it to kids maybe if I wanted to hand them to them at a different time or if I want to have a different option for how I give them this little assessment or this game. So like I said, I like to give this sometimes as a review. I can do it as a pretest. I can do it as for a fun game, or I can't even do it as my assessment. Lots of great options in quizzes. Okay, so here's kind of what it's going to look like if the student is playing. So first of all, you give them the game code. Um, if you don't send them to it directly from something like Google Classroom, Once they're in, they need to enter in their name. And this is playing as a homework game, so it's at their own pace whenever they want to play. Now, I have selected to play this where the memes they, are, they see are memes from our middle school. I'm going to do one question wrong so you can see some of the wrong answers, how that works. So it does show the correct answer when you're done. And do one more wrong question. And then once they're done, I have some options. I chose to let them see what their score was. So they can go ahead and review their questions. You can choose to let them or not let them review the questions. I chose to let them review the questions when they were done. So that is what it looks like for a student to be able to play the game. And now you know. <laughs>